we have uh, spring. That right there tells you that probably you're going to have to use Ukwuk and energy considerations. We also have a moving object that has a certain velocity that's hitting the spring. All of those things uh, kind of give you an idea that we're going to have to use Ukwuk or energy considerations. Now, part A of this question says, um, what is the work done by the spring force? So we actually have to calculate work here. And here we have to be careful. Maybe the first thing that comes to your mind is work equals F cosine theta D. I'm not going to use that. Why not? Because you can only use that formula if the force is a constant force. And uh, definitely the spring force is not constant. You might remember that the formula for the force that a spring exerts is equal to kx. At least the, the magnitude of the force is equal to kx. And so that means that as the x changes, the f changes. So can't use that formula. Um, here's an option. Work is equal to the integral of f of x dx. That will work because as long as you have a formula for um, force that has x in it, and we do, you can perform that integration. So uh, that's one way to do it. You could integrate kx dx. Now that's not the way that I'm going to do it, um, so if you uh, want to choose to do it that way, you'll end up with the same answer I'm about to get. Um, what I was thinking is that when it comes to a spring, we have a formula, and it's on the formula sheet for the potential energy of a spring. Potential energy of a spring is equal to 1 half kx squared. And the way that that relates to work is uh, there's a formula that defines uh, potential energy. And it goes like this. Change in potential energy is equal to the negative of the work done by a conservative force. And so a quick reminder, what's a conservative force? Well, there are some very technical definitions for it. But I think for the intents and purposes of this course, the best way to think of a conservative force is uh, it's, it's a force that we have a potential energy equation for. So in this class, what do we have potential energy equations for? Well, obviously we have a potential energy equation for springs. So a spring is a conservative force. We also have a potential energy equation for gravity. So gravity is a conservative force. And in this course, that's it. Those are the only two conservative forces that we're going to deal with. So um, they're asking us to figure out the work done by the spring. Solving for this W. Let's rearrange this a little bit then. So then W is equal to negative delta U. And so we can use our potential energy equation to answer this question. So negative change in anything is always final minus initial. Final potential energy minus original potential energy. So the final potential energy would be 1 half. Now K is 320. X, that's how far it's been compressed from the relaxed position, is 0.075. I'm going to have to square that. Um, and then minus the initial potential energy, which is 1 half k uh, 0 squared, because initially the spring was uncompressed. So uh, pop that into our calculator. We'll get an answer here. So 0 0.075 squared, 320, and divide by 2. And so I end up with 0.9, but there's a negative sign there. So it's negative 0.9 joules is the answer that we're looking for. And uh, you can take a moment and think about why is it negative. Um, when something does negative work, it takes kinetic energy away from an object. And that's exactly what would happen here, that as this block hits the spring, the spring is going to take kinetic energy away from the block. So I am not surprised that we get a negative answer there. Okay, let's go on to part B, which says, what is the increase in thermal energy of the block floor system? I made a little uh, edit here because uh, I want to show you something I did. I started off in the wrong direction, but um, sometimes that's good to see. I was thinking, oh, we have to calculate the work done by friction, and friction is definitely a non-conservative force. I mean, we don't have a potential energy equation for friction. Friction doesn't create potential energy. So when I thought, hey, let's figure out the work done by a non-conservative force, I of course thought of Ukwuk because the W in Ukwuk is the work done by a non-conservative force. That's when I got stuck because I realized, uh, what am I going to use for point A, which needs to be before friction does its work, and what am I going to use for point B, which is after friction does its work? Well, point B 
is can be at this location where the spring has to or where the block has totally compressed the spring. And so at that location, the kinetic energy is zero because the block has totally compressed the spring and for a moment it's at rest. And the potential energy that the spring has is calculated up here. It's really 0.9. The potential energy is 0.9. I know the work is negative 0.9, but the potential energy is 0.9. So this side of the equation, no problem. But what about point A? Um, the logical place to use for point A is right before the block hits the spring. Well, the potential energy there is zero. But that's when I realized, what is the kinetic energy at that location? And the truth is, we don't know. And so that means that I can't use Ukwuk to figure out the work done by friction because I would have two unknowns. So sometimes that happens. You head down the wrong pathway. Um, what's my alternative? Well, how about this right here? Work equals F cosine theta d. Friction is a constant force. And so if I can calculate how big the force of friction is, and I know the distance, it's 7.5 centimeters, I should be able to answer this question. Uh, so um, let's calculate the force of friction. Of course, uh, maybe I'll do this on a another page so it's not so crowded. So friction, of course, is equal to uh, coefficient of friction times normal force. And in this problem, they gave us the coefficient of friction. It's 0.25. The normal force here, you know, if you're not sure about it, you can always draw a free body diagram of the block. Uh, but before it hits the spring, and even after it hits the spring, in the y direction at least, the only forces are normal force and the force of gravity. So this is a simple situation where normal force happens to be equal to the force of gravity which is equal to mg. And so the mass of this block is 2.5g is 9.8. So multiplying those things together, um, I get 0.25 times 2.5 times 9.8 is 6.125. That's the force of friction, 6.125 newtons. So now we can go back and calculate the work done by friction, force, cosine theta, distance. So the force is 6.125. Cosine theta, sometimes people get messed up by figuring out what that angle is. It's the angle between the direction of the force, and which way is friction pointing in this case? The block is actually moving that way. Friction always points in the opposite direction of motion or the way something's about to slip. So friction points that way. And, uh, and it's the angle between force and displacement. And the object is displacing that way. The direction of displacement is always going to be in the same direction as the velocity. So those two arrows point 180 degrees in the opposite direction of one another. And then we have the distance, which is 0 0.075 in meters. So I'm going to get a negative answer here. 6.125 times 0 0.075 is 0.459. I'm going to round it off there. 0 0.459, and that would be joules. So this is the work that's done by friction. It's negative because, as I said earlier, uh, when you do negative work on an object, it takes velocity away from it. And that's definitely what's happening to this block. Now, our actual question, however, was what is the increase in the thermal energy of the block floor system? So this is negative because it's taken energy, kinetic energy, away from the block but it's putting it into the form of thermal. So we actually have an increase of thermal energy of 0.459 joules. So if I were to answer that question, I wouldn't put a negative sign on it. I would put a positive sign on it because uh, thermal energy is increasing. Okay, now we have the last part of the question, which is how fast was the block going when it first struck the spring? So fortunately, I didn't waste the work that I did earlier, because now we can answer that question by using Ukwuk. So I've already determined the values when the spring is fully compressed. I'm using that as point B. It's at rest, and the potential energy of the spring is 0.9. Uh, now we're looking for, right here, I'm going to replace this with 1 half mv squared. We're looking for how fast the block is going just before it hits the spring. And now we know that the work done by friction during this compression is what we got on this other page, negative 0.459. So I can plug in a negative 0.459 here. This is getting a little sloppy, uh, but let me rewrite it. 
So basically I have 0 plus 1 half the mass, which is 2.5, v squared, uh, minus 0.459 is equal to 0.9. And we can solve that for v, and that should give us the speed of the block just before it hits the spring. So 0.9, I'm going to actually have to add 0.459 when I take it to the other side. Multiply by 2, divide by 2.5, and take the square root and get 1.04 meters per second.